Um, it's great to be here. I mean, Hong Kong is uh, always uh, an inspiring city to me. Uh, I've been meeting some uh, very interesting people uh, in a couple of hours here. I heard some very uh, uh, interesting stories, and it's all very inspiring. Uh, I'm glad also that I have the chance to uh, advertise my country a little bit. Uh, I think the organization has been fantastic, and uh, um, yeah, let's try to make this as interesting as it can be uh, for you guys. I will talk to you about car design today. Before I start, I will uh, introduce myself a little bit. Uh, designing cars was always a dream for me. Um, to tell you the truth, I didn't think it would uh, become uh, a reality one day. Uh, I think I had to convince uh, my parents first that you could actually uh, make money with uh, design, or at least live with design. Um, but eventually, um, I, st I started to study design in Belgium, product design, and then I started to uh, study car design uh, afterwards in, uh, then in, in a school in, in the US. My first job out of school was uh, in a small Italian company that you might know, Zagato. Uh, my, uh, my heart um, uh, wanted me to start in Italy in one of those companies, you know, all those uh, uh, companies like Pininfarina, uh, Ghia, uh, Bertone, Giugiaro, are uh, history in car design. And I started to work at Zagato, not just for a little bit. Uh, I then went to Ford in Italy and then to uh, BMW in California and then in uh, Munich. I spent 13 years of my life at BMW. It's been a great experience. Uh, I love the company, I love the team, and I love many things over there. But I took the decision a couple of months ago to uh, come to China uh, for a new adventure for Great Wall Motors that uh, some of you might know. Um, in a couple of uh, facts and numbers, uh, Great Wall is the first independent car manufacturer of uh, China, and the fact that they were independent was very interesting to me. Uh, the sales are above 700,000 700, cars in, uh, in China and in a couple of countries in export, 50,000 employees. I was the first Western employee to sign for Great Wall. Uh, the home base is uh, Baoding in the Hebei province next to uh, Beijing. And uh, I just opened a design studio in Shanghai as well, so I'm flying every week in between uh, Baoding and uh, Shanghai. At BMW, I've done um, two cars, two SUVs. That was, that's why maybe the profile was interesting for a brand like uh, Great World that is fo focusing on SUV now. Uh, I've done the X5 and then uh, a little bit later, uh, the X6. Uh, I finished my two last years at BMW by managing the, the sub-brand M and uh, all the projects, I would say, that are coming out now uh, uh, were done with, uh, with my team. Now, I want to talk to you about car design and what happens before a car gets into your garage, before you can see a car. Um, a big part of the iceberg that uh, we don't see really, uh, or not always, is the pre-development. Um, some of you might know this car that, we, that BMW called the uh, Gina. Uh, it was a car made out of fabric, and of course the idea of BMW was not to make a car out of fabric, but this car has been extremely inspiring for uh, form language, for new technique, for new materials, and especially for uh, new ways uh, for designers to design cars. Uh, we were doing cars before in a way that was completely different, modeling, surfacing. Uh, this car really opened some new doors uh, for us. So pre-development uh, is really in inspiration. And uh, the first thing you try to bring out of a design team is creativity. Uh, good design, good modeling, making a good car. You can always do it, but you need to uh, have the right idea. Yeah? And this is also what I'm working on uh, a lot with the, the team uh, in China. So those cars, the pre-development, all those concept cars, if they're internal or external, or show cars that we show or that we don't show, that we keep inside the company, are there for new ideas, new forms, new way of thinking, uh, new solutions, and then, of course, inspiration. Now, I would like to show you a little bit of uh, the process. How do we go from a sketch like this to a car in production? Because this is really the way, the way it happens. Our boss basically selects a sketch and he expects to see that on the road um, later. Uh, before designers really start to, to design the dress, I would say, we have to uh, work on proportions. 
and especially in a company uh, like BMW, what makes the proportions before you design it, what makes this car a real BMW? Yeah. Um, we are, of course, doing that in a different way now at Great World, but it's very, very important. If you start with the wrong basis, so that, in, that includes package, uh, you know, wheel size, graphics, etc., then you will never get a good car. So proportions and the work we do uh, before the designer starts is very, very important. All these objects here can basically have the same function, but some of them, of course, look better than some others. And not really because of the design, because of, because of their proportions. It's a quick Photoshop I had done a, a while ago. You, you know this car, it's a little old now, but um, it shows by, you know, the, the upper one is uh, the car that, uh, that you know on the road. The lower one is exactly the same design, but with a couple of differences. It's a bit like this game of those seven mistakes that you have to find out. But uh, I won't go through all the, the things I changed here, but it shows that the car underneath with exactly the same design doesn't look as good as the, uh, as the one on top. Yeah? So all those things, the proportions are very, very important. Then you start to uh, a phase uh, like uh, any designer, it's a sketching phase. You start with a white sheet of paper. All our designers are 2D designers. Yeah? All of them uh, are uh, sketching. If it's on paper, if it's with marker, if it's with a tablet on the computer, it always stays 2D. And then we basically present our work yeah, to, uh, to our design chief who can pick the designs that he wants to see in uh, models. Models, we work this material that I will show you uh, afterwards. So this is the kind of presentation uh, we, uh, we were doing uh, all the time, uh, or in any car design studio, uh, I believe. It's a competition. I mean, many people all, all, uh, often ask me if we work as a team. Of course, it's a team of designers. I think we also inspire each other uh, a lot, but it's a competition. So we pick one design per designer, and that designer is going to bring it all the way, or as far as he or she can in the competition. Then once we uh, pick a design, of course, we're all sketching um, with, I wouldn't say car cartoony style, but sketching car sketches are, of course, not 100% realistic. We, we do uh, like bigger wheels, we make perspective that really make the design w way more dramatic. And the idea is to bring the emotion of that sketch in reality. And this phase here is extremely important. We call that a tape drawing, and this is the first time uh, the engineers give us a real base for our design. I mean, we know that base before starting the project, but here we have to really bring the emotions of our sketch on a realistic uh, basis. We work with this black and uh, with this black tape that is uh, flexible, and for this we try to do that uh, on top of those uh, uh, yeah, engineering uh, input. Afterwards, we try uh, we start a cast model. Cast model is a computer. Uh, a computer model. Uh, we make a quick, quick shot in uh, three, four weeks uh, to bring the design as close as possible, and then we mill it in clay. This is an old picture, but uh, you know the process uh, is the same, of course. This material is specially made for car design. It's a material that you put at 60 degrees on the car, so it's, a, so it's a warm, and then when it cools down, you can work it out, you can really sculpt it out. And you can be, be very, very precise yeah, to, the, to the millimeter. We make sections of cars where we only remove a millimeter in the section. So we work on those cars. Each designer has his car, basically, or her car, uh, interior or exterior, until a final presentation. And we put this film, this silver film that you see here on the lower, and in two or three hours, the car becomes silver with black graphics. Of course, graphics are very important. Uh, and we make a presentation like this one, where we uncover the car, and usually, I think it works like that in every company, all the management comes and picks the one that they like. It's a bit like a musical chair where, you know, we're five of us, and then we remove uh, two, and then a couple of months later, uh, we make another presentation, we remove another two, and a couple of months later, we, we, we remove the, the final one, yeah. So, 
Yeah, this is this is interesting. Um, we always make those presentations uh, outside, and why why outside? Um, we have design studios that are pretty big, and it's very important to uh, to to have distance to look at our cars. But to make presentations like that, then we take very very big space. We need at least the, the size of this room. It's very important to see cars from far away. Yeah, we have completely different impressions, and we always discover things that are wrong. Yeah, and the the, the, the coworker here that is adjusting graphics on this car, uh, it's you know those things you don't see in an internal studio. So we go back in clay, uh, we remove the the, the the silver, and we re we rework on the car um, until the next presentation. Yeah, then. The designer wins the design, I would say, and you have to start uh, in interior and in exterior a production process. A production process of uh, it's a work that is about one year in a in a German company. It goes much quicker here in China, but this is really really where you bring the refinement to your car. Yeah, you see here. Uh, how, how big we look at details on the screen, and for months we look at the engineers until we really have the last uh, section, the last radius, the last gap in between the pieces. And of course, those surfaces are the surfaces that we're going to use for uh, tooling. Interior as well, and this is uh, some uh, color and trim where we look at uh, details, headlights, yeah. And then we uh, we make these motors, hard motors, milled uh, out of uh, aluminum usually, so it's very, very precise, and you see exactly where you still have little, little mistakes. We put lo those little dots, you see those uh, yellow dots are probably uh, uh, design dots, red dots are probably engineering dots, and then we go back to the computer, we rework for another uh, couple of months until the car then is uh, perfect. Now. I'll talk about uh, China um, and uh, what I'm trying to do in my in my new job now. Um, it's of course an interesting time for uh, Chinese automakers. Um, uh, I think, uh, I mean, as you know, there's over 50 car companies in China, and I don't think that the 50 car companies will survive. Uh, China uh, will also go go through the same process as uh, Europe, America, where bigger companies will buy smaller companies, some companies will die, and it's going to be very interesting to see what will happen in the next 10, 15 years, but uh, I think uh, some companies have a lot of potential to be strong, and those companies who will be strong in China will be also extremely strong uh, global. Which ones will survive? Of course, I don't have a precise answer to that, but uh, I believe that the ones who, who, who go global uh, will of course survive. It's, it's important nowadays not only to stay in the Chinese market, but before going global, it's of course uh, very important also to be super strong in the Chinese market. Also, uh, we're at this time of the Chinese uh, company's history where it's extremely important to create your own history. Uh, and this is what we're trying to do. Brand identity for uh, car companies are extremely important. Uh, I'm, showing, I'm showing you three cars here that are very similar in price, proportions, uh, driving capabilities. Uh, in the, let's say, in the, in the 70s, in the 80s, you would buy a BMW, a BMW because it was a very good driving machine. Uh, nowadays, an Audi, a BMW, and a Mercedes drive almost the same, I would say. And it's not like one drives better than the other one. One client might actually prefer the driving style of a Mercedes, but they will all give you the same uh, technology somehow. Um, therefore, one aspect of the car industry that makes people buy or not buy a car is uh, design. Design is extremely important. Um, you see that in car industry, you see that in uh, in interior architecture, I mean, the, the time of my parents, you would buy probably one kitchen for life. You would make a big investment and buy one kitchen for all your life. Nowadays, you buy a kitchen at IKEA for three, four thousand euros, and you can change it every 10, 15 years. <coughs> in car business, it's the same as well. Uh, design becomes more and more important. It's, of course, good for designers, but it's also dangerous as 
this is also the reason why people might not buy your car. What do designers have to find for a new brand, brand identity? Uh, of course, uh, what to me is extremely important is the facial expression of the car. Uh, you see cars nowadays, very difficult to come up with a new facial expression, but the goal is that anybody sees a car passing by in the street, and in a second, you can say, oh, that's a Chrysler, oh, that's a BMW, yeah? And some companies have a strong facial expressions, some other ones don't. Also, um, yeah, uni uniqueness. Um, and I'm showing you again those two cars, BMW, Audi, I think, um, uh, in the fa facial expression, uh, those are two brands that really show something that is unique. Any car company that starts to do b big opening like Audi, people will point at it and say, oh wow, it looks like Audi. Same way, if you make those two kidneys of a BMW, it will right away look, at, uh, look like a BMW. And this is really the goal of the design team, is to try to find something un unique enough, but that also that gives you enough possibilities in the future to uh, make it evolve into something uh, different. And <clears throat> by, by evolution, uh, this is what I show with those pictures, yeah? uh, BMW's kidneys are so strong that you can actually play with different proportions, it will always stay a BMW. You need also a philosophical approach to, um, uh, to car design. Yeah? Um, some companies definitely uh, think in a certain way and don't get out of the path. And I think not only in car design, but uh, uh, for all of us uh, designers, it's very, very important to, to stick to your story, stick to your mindset. Of course, you have to be open enough to, to, to listen and to uh, uh, bring new, new ideas, but you have to believe in something, in a way of doing things, and uh, stick to it. <coughs> Icons. Icons in car design uh, is something extremely important. I'm showing again the kidneys here. Little details on car that are very unique to some companies. If you manage to have something in the front, something on the side, and something on the rear, that is very unique to your company, then you, then you win. Yeah? Uh, a brand like Kia, for example, has been developing strong uh, front identity, uh, model after model, and they definitely had a plan. And they get to something that is very recognizable. And even though the company is young, uh, they do have uh, very, very strong models and a very big uh, brand identity. And then the last thing that is um, probably the most difficult thing in car design to, uh, to come up with is a new form language. Um, if you think at a time, uh, I would say around the end of 90s, uh, at a time where a brand like Audi went into a very geometrical uh, form language, yeah? it was basically, uh, if you think of an Audi TT, some very, very simple shape, a couple of cut lines, those cut lines by graphics would create a headlight. It was something very, very strong. At the same time, a company like BMW would do the car that uh, I showed you, showed you the, the Gina, something way more sculptural. Those two are two very, very different form language. And it's probably the most difficult thing to come up with in car design today. Uh, if I think of all the cars on the road today, there's maybe two or three companies that really stick out with a strong uh, individual form language. So all those things, all these things, is basically my uh, new mission with the the team there that we're building up for a Great Wall, and that's what we are working on. Um, I've been there since uh, six months. Uh, of course, there's a there's a big team in uh, building. Uh, there's a lot of work to uh, to get all the company uh, boost up and to really uh, bring the creativity, the the professionalism of a of a of a global company. Also. Uh, I brought a couple of people from some other companies who were super interested in the challenge as well and who signed to come to uh, Baoding and to, uh, to Shanghai. Uh, in January, we'll be, uh, we'll be set with a, with a full team in Shanghai and we will start with, uh, with all these uh, 
brand identity for uh, for Great Wall. It's very, very exciting adv adventure. I have to say there's not one day in these last six months where I thought, ah, I took the wrong decision. Um, I will not hide, there's been a lot of uh, uh, frustration sometimes, and it's normal, but it's very exciting, and um, uh, it's going very fast, and I like that. Thank you very much. Very impressive presentation. Ah, oh, right here. Oh, okay. Hi. Hi. Um, it's great because uh, Belgian people always give me this impression that they speak a lot of different language. I went to a car design school also, um, but I'm in design, other design now. Um, so I see that you work a lot in this, you went to school in the States, you work in BMW for many years, and then all of a sudden you come to Shanghai, and, which is some business that I always deal with. And what I find really difficult for me is that working from a Western perspective and then come to a team of complete Chinese designer, it's really difficult to work with them because they think differently. Um, they're, they're really good with communication, but then the language barrier is quite strong. For you and for your team, I would like to know uh, what kind of challenge have you faced so far that you find mm. would be interesting to share? It's a good question. Um, I mean, you mentioned it. Uh, my biggest problem is probably communication. Yeah. Uh, I have a team in boarding of 130 people, and in the 130 people, there's maybe five who speak a little bit of English. So everything goes to translators. Uh, it takes a lot of time. Fortunately, we have a job that is very visual, so you can explain with little sketches, uh, drawings, sections. And then you find good solutions. Uh, I mean, y you have to find solutions like that. But it's, a, it's the biggest challenge. It's uh, communication. Then, uh, of course, the culture. You know, uh, I'm learning every day. Uh, I, I should not expect the same thing than in Germany. I'm also not German. Uh, every country has very uh, different cultures. And it's a culture shock for me uh, to start in, uh, in China. But I think that uh, car design is global. Uh, there is no, uh, there is no Chinese car design. There is, there is no more Italian car design. There is no more German car design. Every car design studio in the world is very international. So, uh, Great Wall has to become global as well in sales and in car design. Pierre, you mentioned your your graphic design training, your background. Uh, your product design. Product, product design, design training. training. Yeah. Um, what do you think? How do you think marketing is different in China? We've talked a lot about design, but of course in the auto industry, a lot of the work that designers do eventually appears in marketing campaigns for cars. How do you see that part of the communication process being different in China compared to, say, in, in Belgium or in France or Germany? Mm -hmm. The, the marketing, uh, at least from what I know in, the, in these last couple of months here, um, is not, it doesn't have a long term plan, yeah? especially in car business where you, you take five years to make a car uh, here in China, uh, th there's no big plan. We have to be very reactive and we have to make a car in two and a half years, three years. Look at the market and react. Yeah? And um, my boss, who's the owner of the company, also comes up, oh, new idea, we start a project. It's not that, I that easy. I would much prefer to have a plan for the next 10 years like I used to have, but we have to work like that at least right now, and I think this is also one part of the, uh, of the process that will uh, have a little more, that will be a little more process oriented and a little more uh, planned. That's an interesting reflection. I think really the only organization that has a good plan in China is the government, I think, every, <laughs> yeah. every five years. Okay, um, any question? Um, my question is, because just now you answered that lady's question with that you think uh, car market is global and uh, I, 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 I a little bit disagree. I think we have a totally different uh, set here that in, in Asia, I don't know if the numbers are correct, but it's like under 10% of population here have a car. And I'm a little bit worried actually <laughs> if everybody here is going to have a car um, because we have the infrastructure problem, we have pollution problem. So, and on the other hand, in Europe, uh, young people don't see that status symbol. The mm. car is not a status symbol anymore. So I would like to know, um, what is your vision for uh, your, your new company, for, for your position? 
where 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 are things going actually? Mm. What do you think? I mean, you probably need numbers to uh, answer precisely to that question. But uh, in China, the the population that is growing the most right now is the middle class population, uh, population who's earning a thousand euros uh, netto a month. Yeah, those people, more and more, will be able to buy cars, not extremely expensive cars, but buy cars. This is a huge potential for uh, the Chinese car industry. So for companies like Great Wall, I mean, first of all, you have to be strong in your own country, and then you become global. Uh, of course, you know, the pollution uh, problems uh, you're talking about, I mean, I'm coming from Shanghai, where yesterday we couldn't see anything. But um, first of all, uh, you cannot ask, um, uh, how to put it, the, the car industry is, prob is not the the one responsible only for uh, for for this cause. Yeah, I think in the world it represents seven percent of the the pollution. Second of all, the the, the rules in Europe, for example, or in California now, uh, rules that are a little more global as well, become more and more strict regarding pollution. Those rules did not make it yet in China, so that will also make some kind of uh, 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 natural. Uh, breakdown in the car industry. Yeah, some the company is going to be much more difficult for Chinese car industries to cope with those reglementations. Aerodynamic is something we don't really talk about right now in the car uh, industry in China, but it's something that is very very important in uh, any other uh, global car industry. So all these things are going to make also the car business and driving cars way uh, cleaner, as all the other companies in China that have also to. Uh, find solution now that it's working well, now that, now that the business is going well, have to find solution to make it cleaner. But there will be more cars in China, for sure. Uh, 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 但是现在更多的那个产品或者设计都会融入到人的因素去做一些用户调研或者用户分析。我想知道在汽车这个领域里面会不会加入到这些人性的调研和相关的一个思考在里面。I um, would say not really. There are market research, but not specifically, not specific to, uh, to, uh, to details on the car or to uh, face facial expressions or things like that. Uh, you know, the, the, the one thing I really liked in, the, in Great Wall is that the, the hierarchy is extremely small. Yeah? My direct boss owns the company and is the only person that I have to talk, talk to regarding design. This guy also is somehow responsible for marketing, for uh, not for the market research, but he's going to take decisions for marketing, he's going to take decisions for design, he's going to take many de decisions in the company. So it keeps it really um, in a close environment. Uh, I think right now for the, mar uh, the Chinese market, it's been working well. Uh, uh, yeah, they, we've shown that uh, there was a lot of uh, gut feeling that uh, was involved in the decisions. Uh, of course, in the future, uh, market research have to be much more precise, I think, and it, it definitely helps also uh, designers to, uh, to start a new project. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to finish up with a, a question. Um, my company, Asia Digital Mojo, is a marketing company, and we have a lot of car clients. We, we do their marketing campaign, and we get a lot of assets and renderings and... Uh, animations from designers yeah. on the client side, and you showed a few here. Um, I also teach, interestingly, at a school in India, uh, a car design school about marketing. And I'm wondering, or everybody here who's involved in product design is used to using many different kinds of software tools. And those mm -hmm. tools are changing all of the time. And in the car industry, even things like clay sculpting is maybe being replaced by digital sculpting and digital tools. I wonder what impact do you think, particularly in China, where maybe the formation of the students, of the new employees is different from Europe, what impact are those digital tools having on your design process that you showed here? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I'm a big believer in working on clay because you have a car standing there that you see every day that you can touch. 
and it's really important to refine uh, surfaces and to really see that thing uh, in real, in flesh. Uh, this being said, uh, right now in the process uh, specific to Great Wall, we're working a lot in digital because it's the only way not to do reverse engineering. What is called reverse engineering is that designers make a design for a couple of months and then we scan the car, we give it to the engineers and of course they come back with so many problems and I don't want to work like that. So now we work a lot in, uh, in digital uh, because we don't have yet the equipment or the machines to measure, to give sections, etc. So there's much more exchange in between engineers and designers and we know where we go. And this is the only way to make uh, car design uh, right. Yeah? You, at the end, that car has to be produced. That's really interesting. So you find that the tools are improving communication between different teams within the, in, in the car development process? Yes. I mean, you have to keep the right balance. Uh, my goal is still to work a lot on clay, but right now, uh, for some projects, we, we have to use digital uh, a lot. Okay. Can we give a thank you to Pierre? Thank you so much.